Today we're taking a look at the AMAX Standard 3220 Stretch Dex Frame. This is not an ultralight frame. This one weighs in about 88 grams. But after we put it together, we're going to see how it matches up against these two frames. The Boss Medium and the B-Fight 210. <laughs> When the AMAX Standard 3 arrives, it comes in a package like this. All the carbon fiber pieces and screws are individually wrapped inside other bags inside here. Just going to get this thing torn open and we'll start putting it together. So here on this arm, it's really hard for a lot of designers to come up with a new, unique idea for this part of the, of the arm just because you try not to copy someone else's because that's where a lot of people will see a lot of similarities between quads and start saying they were copied. However, back here on this side, this is completely unique. I've never seen an arm that actually look like this but I believe it's shaped like this so that it can play off of the strength of the other uh, arms in the middle of the frame to get a little bit more strength and not flex quite as much during flight Now these arms are supposed to be 3.5 millimeters and good they are 3.5 millimeters they're not 3.5 isn't huge for a quad anymore it seemed like a lot of people frame designers and stuff went to uh, 4 millimeters and some of them are going to 5 millimeters but because of the width of this being what 14.3 ish or so um, 14 or or whatever they uh, these arms are actually should be pretty stable in a crash and let's see yeah I'm trying to flex it right now and there's not hardly any flex coming out of this arm which is good because the less flex you get in here the less likely it is to break here are the two plates that kind of sandwich the arms down in the lower part and these are actually exactly the same front to back left to right and you can even flip it over and they're still identical so Kind of think they missed out on a chance of designing the quad a little differently, but, you know, whatever. To each their own. Here's this arm I was talking about, and you can see here how when it lines up, it kind of sets right to the middle horizontally and vertically on that plate. And like I said, that's also going to give a lot of strength between the arms so they can play off each other's strength instead of having to rely on just the screws. While you're putting this frame together, be aware that there are 6mm screws, there are some 10mm screws, and there are 4 11mm screws. Now normally I think the 4 millimeter, the 11 millimeter screws would go with the 4 lock nuts. However, this is the 10 millimeter screw and I'm going to run it through here and use it for the lock nut. Then I'll use the 11 millimeter screws up for the, uh, the spacers and that'll just put more threads into the spacer and hopefully give it a little bit more strength holding the top plate so in the event of a crash it'll be less likely to bend. So here's the frame nearly assembled. And at first I got to looking at this and I thought, well this is a weird hole pattern, how they have two up here and then two back here. Well, that's just because of the way that it's designed. It has these uh, camera mounts that are really long and they slide down through all the uh, all the plates down into the, yeah, that's really tight. Okay, so they go down in there and that basically covers up this hole up here in the front, which means that you're gonna use these four holes here to hold your flight board and then these two holes here will pretty much just go unused. Now if you put these um, camera mounts up here then the opposite would be true. You just use the other four holes but it's kind of an interesting design but I think it's just done that way that way you can put it together either way and not really put anything on backward and it still fits together correctly. So here's the AMAX Standard 3 fully assembled and it actually comes out to feel really tough. I mean to put those longer well one millimeter longer screws up into these spacers so I hope that helps. The little short sixes went up here down through the top to hold into the uh, spacers. Now the spacers in the picture were actually blue and mine came in orange so you know, I guess there's no guarantee on the color of spacers that you get but it didn't really specify blue in the description so I guess you just get what you get. Uh, this is uh, this 3 is on here so you want to make sure you put this top plate on correctly if you put it on the other way it'll be a big E. <laughs> and also it has these little holes here which I would assume are for your video transmitter and you can run your video transmitter out the back and it has these holes here to help hold on to the antenna and hopefully put some of the pressure on the on the antenna itself and not back on the uh, the SMA connector on the uh, video transmitter so that way if it takes an impact this thing will hold on to the antenna instead of on to the SMA adapter connected to the um, video transmitter and hopefully it'll survive now because there's these arms all touching here there's nowhere to run your um, battery strap through the plate so it'll be going up over the top and underneath the uh, ESC or your uh, power distribution board up there. So let's go ahead and get some measurements off of this. Like I said before these are 3.5 millimeter arms. Well, yeah, 3.5. This top plate here comes in at 2 millimeters, and I've been seeing a lot more top plates come in at 2 and sometimes 3 millimeters even just because I think people are getting tired of breaking their top plates. This whole middle section here is, is about 7, 
which means that the uh, with the middle being three and a half, these are both what 1.75 millimeters for the top and the bottom plate through there. That's pretty good. These spacers here are 30 millimeter spacers. So if you need to buy replacements, you can use 30s. If you're not going to use these side plates to mount your camera, you can pretty much put in whatever you want. One motor hole to the opposite motor hole comes in about 220 millimeters, maybe even 219. Side to side, this comes out to be about 140 millimeters. And from front to back, it comes up to be about 168 millimeters. Here are two 5-inch props up here, and they're centered up over the motor holes. And you can see here, there's, there's about 15 millimeters of clearance through there, so you're fine. And also coming back here, it's going to clear the frame just fine too, so you shouldn't have any problem running 5-inch props. You're not going to run 6-inch props, there's just not enough room between the motor and the body there. To have some weights to compare the AMAX Standard 3 against, here's the Boss Medium, coming in at 61.2. Here's the B-Fight 210, coming in about 62.7. Here's the Scorpion 220 frame. This is pretty popular among freestylers. It comes in about 150 grams. And here's the AMAX Standard 3. It comes in about 84.5 grams. Here I have an HS 1177 size camera. So this would be similar to your Runcam Swift or your, I don't know, Runcam Eagle. If they, uh, not the micros, just the full size ones. And between these plates, it's about 27 millimeters of space in between them. And so here you can see this is running straight and it does stick out past the frame a little bit. And if you run it up here to 45 degrees, which is the highest you can go because of this little piece up here. But if you run it all the way up there like that, you get about 45 degrees and you should be able to see very well. Especially when you're flying, 45 degrees is like this. So you'd still be able to see where you're going. And even if you, even if you went further, you can still see, even, you know, still see okay. Now the problem you might run into back here in the back is this uh, power connector for your camera competing with the space for your flight board back there. Now if you build this tight and small, you'll probably be okay. You know, worst case is you're going to have to move your camera up a little bit and you're going to lose a little bit of angle, but for most people this should probably be okay. And it's just something to think about while you're putting it together. So here are the three frames we just weighed. Now which of these three frames is this guy's main competitor? Well I don't think it's really any of them because these guys are ultralights. They're down around the 60 gram weight where this guy comes in about 88. And it's not this guy because he comes in around 150 and this is more geared toward freestylers. This is kind of a mid, mid kind of class frame I would guess. Or that's what I call it anyway. The, hunt, the range that kind of goes from about 80 to about 110. And a lot of quadcopter frames sit in that range. And the nice thing about that range is they're usually kind of a, a uh, medium between these two. Between ultra lights and the ultra heavy. And they kind of give you a little bit of best of both worlds. They don't tend to break arms quite as easily as the smaller ones. Yet they don't quite survive as many crashes as the, as the heavier ones. But they are a lot lighter than the heavier ones. But not quite as light as the other ones. So you're kind of trading a little bit of, a little bit of both of these to try to come up with a medium. Anyway, this is the AMAX Standard 3 Stretch Dex. This is also available in a regular X if you buy the 215. Um, I'll have some links down in the description to some of these frames if you're interested to take them out, take a look at them. If you have any questions about this frame, you can leave them down in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.